Hello. Good evening. This is another day. I humbly request you to come back to our class so that we can learn together. So before we start our lesson, I want to take this opportunity to thank you so dear so much for your support. You are the reason why we are where we are today and continue sharing the link so that many people can subscribe and get to gain the mathematical experience that we require in our daily lives. Thank you so much. God bless you. Welcome to our lesson. Today we are looking at maths uh, form two, lesson number one, which means we have not yet talked about quadratic equations. This is the first time. Our subtopic is solving equations using factorization method. We are going to have an example which is going to enable us achieve this objective of uh, solving equations using the factorization method. The, the, the example we have here is saying solve the simultaneous equations. Look at the equations given. The first one is a linear equation. How do you identify it as linear? You look at the unknown letters in that particular equation. We have X and Y. Those are two unknown letters. Which power do these kind of letters have? When you have X, it means it has power 1. When there's, not, not, there's nothing written as the power, it means it has power 1. Remember, any number less power 1 is that particular number. Y is also just Y. It has no power. But in our mind, we know it has power 1. The highest power in that particular equation of the unknown letters is 1. So that makes that particular equation to be a linear equation. Let's look at the equation number 2. We have uh, X and Y as unknown letters. But look at the first x there is having power 2. This is the highest power in this particular equation because x and y there, they are having power 1 each. Any equation with, uh, with power 2, in any equation where there is a, a known letter with power 2, it means the, you are dealing with a quadratic function or a quadratic equation. And if this power t, it means you are dealing with uh, cubic functions. So that's what it means. Now, remember, when you have two different equations, one being linear equation, the other one being quadratic, you cannot use, you cannot use elimination method. It is not possible. So I prefer us using substitution method at the first level. So you will see me trying to make y the subject of the formula. I will now say, since I have 2x minus y is equal to 3, I will remain with minus y on my left hand side. I take 2x to the right hand side, which will be a minus 2x. And now plus 3. 3 is a plus, and it has not changed its position. Because I want to remain with a positive y, I will divide by minus 1 on both sides. The minus and minus will cancel out. I remain with y is equals to the minus and minus will also cancel. We remain with positive 2x. Uh, a positive divided by a minus is a minus. So I've made y the subject of the formula from the first equation. Let us go together to the second equation. So what are we going to do in the second equation? Where well, there's y in the second equation, which is this one, we will remove that y, replace the y with, with the value we have here. Remember, 2x minus 3 is going to represent y. So wherever there is y, we will remove 
the y and replace it with 2x minus 3. And that's what we call substitution method. So you will see me doing this, taking x squared in the second equation minus x. Then I open the bracket. Instead of this y, I will, I will bring in 2x minus 3. 2x minus 3. Then it's equals to minus 4. As you can be able to see, I'm now having an equation with one unknown, which is very easy to solve. Let us open the brackets. We will obtain x squared minus x times 2x is uh, 2x squared minus x times minus 3 because a minus times a minus is positive. So we will have positive 3x. Positive 3x. And then is equals to minus 4. We can go to the other side. We add this because they are like terms. They are equivalent terms. So we will now say x squared minus 2x squared will give you minus x squared. Then plus 3x is equals to minus 4. Because it is somehow difficult for learners to deal with an x with the power 2 having a negative. So to make this particular quadratic equation to look simpler, we can divide by minus 1 on both sides. So that now we remain with a positive x squared on this side. This will be, remain a minus because positive divided by a minus is minus. Uh, a minus divided by a minus becomes positive. The same case here, um, a minus divided by a minus is positive. So we can rearrange so that we obtain the equation or the quadratic equation in the form uh, ax squared plus bx plus c is equals to zero. So you will see me bringing the constant to our left hand side. So we will have x squared minus 3x, 4 is positive, coming to our left hand side, it becomes a minus. Then we remain zero on the other side. Now we have formed a quadratic equation, which we will now apply the factorization method. So remember, for us to be able to factorize, we will come up with sum and a product. Remember the equation we have here is in the form ax squared plus px plus c is equals to zero. I've written that so that we can be able to extract the values of a, b, c together. A, remember sum will be the value of B, product will be the value of A times C. Now, the value of A is, is going to represent the coefficient of X squared. Coefficient of a number means anything that is behind that particular number becomes the coefficient. If there is no number here, it means there is one. That's one. If there is no and number there, it means it is one that is there. Because we don't mostly write that we have one A. Instead, we just say we have an A. Now, that means A, in this case, is one part of B. That's the coefficient of X. We have minus, it corresponds to minus three. C is just a constant. So in this case, C is a minus, you just Take that particular constant with its sign, so it is a minus 4. To obtain sum, we just pick the value of b, which is minus 3. To get the product, we just take a times c, which is now minus 4. And we know 1 times minus 4 is minus 4. So how do we come up with two numbers, which when we add, we get minus 3. And when we find their product, we get minus 4. The easiest way is to just 
take the, the product that you have found. So in this case, we have found our product as uh, minus 4. So you ask yourself, what are the multiples of 4? Or how do you obtain 4 by multiplying two numbers? We will start from the common one, which is 4 times 1. So meaning, if you take 4 times 1, you will get 4. But now in this case, we, the 4 is a minus. So it means you can place a minus 8 at 4 or at 1. We will come back to that. Is there any way we can obtain minus 4? Yes, 2 times 2. So 2 times 2 will give you 4. 4 times 1 will give you 4. But because we have a minus here, it means for you to be able to obtain a minus, you can put a minus on any uh, on these two uh, digits that we have written. Like now, if you put a minus at this first two, and then you multiply the two, it will give you a minus 4. But when you add the two, you will get zero. And in this case, we don't have zero as sum. Instead, we have three. We come back here. What will happen if we put a minus on one? Four times minus one will give you a minus four, which is very correct. But when you add four plus minus one, you will obtain a positive three as the sum. And here we have minus three. Therefore, you remove this minus and try to put it on my, uh, on 4. So that now we have minus 4 times 1, which will give us minus 4. And when you add minus 4 and 1, you will now obtain minus 3. So that's how you uh, play around those digits for us to be able to obtain the correct numbers that we require, which will replace the power of B in this particular, uh, in, this, in that particular quadratic equation. So if your product was to be 12, then you are to start by looking at the multiples of 12. And then you add them and try to see whether they will give you the sum that you have. So that's the easiest way to come up with the, uh, the two numbers. So in this case, as you can be able to see, these numbers are satisfying what we require here. So our terms will be minus 4 and 1. So we will now replace this minus 3x and put minus 4 and 1. So we will come down here and say x squared minus 4x 10 plus 1x. You can be able to see when you add these two, you get minus 3x. Then minus 4 is equals to 0. So you now put into brackets two terms. Then you ask yourself, is there a common factor inside here? Yeah, that's x. So we bring x out. x goes to x squared. How many times? x times. 4x divided by x. x and x will cancel. You remain with minus 4. This is a plus. Common, we have 1 and 4. Common is 1, which will be minus, I mean x minus 4 is equals to 0. Therefore, we will now take the terms that are outside the brackets. That is x, x and plus 1. Then, because these other terms are equal or equivalent, we now pick 1. We say this is equals to 0. Then we say everything here should be equated to 0. x plus 1 is equals to 0 or x minus 4 is equals to 0. So we can come back here. If we take plus 1 to the other side, it will become a minus. If you take this positive 4 to the other side, it will become a positive. Those are the values of but we need to find the values of y. We need to find the values of y. So you can come back here. Remember, we can come back here. Where there is x, we substitute it with eta minus 1 or 4 for us to be able to obtain the power of y. So we will now say 2 into, let's start from, uh, 
minus 1 as our power of x. Then minus y is equals to 3. So when you multiply 2 times minus 1, you get minus 2. Then minus y is equals to positive 3. We now take minus 2 to the other side. We will remain with minus y is equals to 3 plus 2. So we are having minus, minus y is equals to 5. We divide by minus 1 on both sides so that we can obtain only the, the positive y, which will be minus 5. So that means when x is minus 1, y is minus 5. So when x is 4, y will be what? So we will come and say 2 into, we, instead of this x, we put now 4. Then minus y is equals to 3. This is 8 minus y is equals to 3. Take 8 to the other side. So it becomes minus y is equals to 3 minus 8. Minus y becomes minus 5. We divide by minus 1, we divide by minus 1. So that means y will be positive 5. So how do we write our answers? We will say x when x is minus 1, comma, y will be y will be minus 5. When x is equal to positive 4, y will be positive 5. y will be positive uh, y will be positive 5. So that's how we obtain the, the answers for these two multinational equations given. So thank you for listening to me. If you have a question, you go to the, our comments you comment, I'm going to answer you immediately. I want to thank you so much for your support. So far, so good. You are the reason why we are where we are. God bless you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.